Though there were a few organisms in this module as well, there is a more separation when compared to the overwhelming number of diseases caused by Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes in the first module. This review of disease presentation should be relatively light, so let's get started. If a patient comes to your office with sore throat, difficulty swallowing, and neck stiffness, what would you think is the likely cause? Try to remember the mechanism of action for this bacterium. Of course, with C. tetani, we will see the disease tetanus. The tonic contractures, headache, and trismus is a common presentation of which disease state? Displaying progression of the disease and increasing quantity of toxins within the body. The spasms can cause headache and locked jaw, known as trismus. As the disease progresses, it can usually cause spasms in the neck and throat. These spasms are not only painful, but they may prevent swallowing. A patient presents with hypotonia and muscle weakness. On review of their history, it is noted that they're four months old and they've also recently ingested honey. This concerning presentation is known as floppy baby syndrome. First time parents should always be warned not to give their children for the first year. This is due to delayed development of their immune system. Infant's immunity is often developed around six months, but a year is a safer recommendation. What if the patient presents with double vision, slurred speech, and trouble breathing? These are the signs and symptoms of botulism. Paralysis of the eyes and mouth are early signs of botulism ingestion, with the paralysis rating down the body. Most deaths due to botulism can be caused by respiratory depression. These last two were easy. The names of the diseases were in the organism. But what about the rest of the Clostridium species? With C. perfringens, there is one main disease of concern. Here's a hint. The patient will likely show pustules or areas of skin with crepitus. This is the severe necrotic complication of gas gangrene, otherwise known as myonecrosis. The prefix myo means muscle, so this literally means that your muscle is rotting away. C. diff has a few associated terms that any medical professional would be wise to know. Though not specifically separate diseases, they may constitute different presentations of the same infection. Remember, this bug has two main toxins that may produce different toxic outcomes. Your first patient has been in the hospital for several days and now is presenting with abdominal distension and tenderness, which C. diff disease state may lead to peritonitis. Of the complications and diseases mentioned in the first tier of this module, toxic megacolon is the one with the most severe complications. This can lead to intestinal necrosis and perforation. The last thing most of us want is our intestinal contents floating around in our abdominal space. The next one is fairly straightforward. What would you suspect with a patient that has cramping and watery rectal discharge? This one, of course, is the watery diarrhea expressed by toxin A. What about a post-antibiotic treatment where the patient is now complaining of abdominal pain. Though C. diff in general is associated with post-antibiotic gastritis, the presenting colonic pseudomembranes are a special presentation with this microbe. The last one wasn't really discussed, but you can probably picture an instance where a patient with typical inflammatory symptoms and hemorrhagic diarrhea occurs. This is also the most severe sequelae of a potentially associated disease of newborns, necrotizing enterocolitis. If there is blood presenting from an, any orifice, there's a good bet that there's a laceration or necrosis. Here, C. diff may cause necrosis of the intestines in adults, but also is thought to cause NEC in infants. Necrosis of the mucosa may lead to an infection from other gut microbes. For the curved rods, neck stiffness and is febrile. This is a classic presentation for meningitis. Listeria should be considered any time a neonate shows these symptoms. Don't forget this organism is also a bully. It'll wait until you're down and then kick you. That's why patients with compromised immune systems are more likely to become susceptible to an infection with this. This is why it's called an opportunistic infection. One of the less severe presentations of C. diphtheriae is shown by a patient with cough, fever, and stridor. Though a rare cause and probably pretty low yield on board exams, some test writers will try to trip you up with this bacteria as a cause of tracheitis. Just remember that it's much less common cause of this disease than Staph aureus. If you haven't done so, or have a long gap in between, it might be time for a booster for this disease. What are the plaques called on a patient with severe throat pain and cough? Gray pseudomembranes can be seen in the throat of some infected individuals with diphtheria. This can sometimes be distinguished from other plaques in similar presentations as it bleeds when it's removed. The plaques are not simply sitting on top of the skin like some fungal infections will. It burrows into the tissue, causing it to bleed. Lastly, we have the only other cardiac presentation for this module. Severe presentations of this particular cardiac defect may require a defibrillator. 
Well, even if you didn't remember the exact name of this defect, you probably guessed by the defibrillator that it had to do with electrical conduction. This particular disease is called a heart block and can be caused by diphtheria or Lyme disease. This particular bacterium causes a skin lesion that is black and painless. What's the disease? This patient has cutaneous anthrax. The black eschar is nearly pathognomonic for bacillus anthraxis. Though cutaneous is more common, there is one other potential type of the disease. It leads to respiratory failure and a widened mediastinum. This is respiratory anthrax, or wool sorters disease. This can occur from an individual kicking up and inhaling dirt infected with the spores of bacillus or disturbing the organism on animal fur. What about our first branching rod? What is the expected disease state where the patient presents with a lumpy jaw mass and oral inflammation signs? This is a case of oral actinomycosis, otherwise known as cervicofacial mycetoma. I know, the many ways to say things gets a bit frustrating. You just never know how it's going to be worded on an exam. So it's best to be familiar with every variation until there's a more standardized testing language. This image clearly states that the upper part is a uterus, so this is not a facial mycetoma. But actinomyces is often depicted by its sulfur granule appearing pus. The yellow pus, as is seen in this abdominal infection, may ooze from a facial abscess in actinomycosis. The last branching bacteria, and last for this tier, is Nocardia asteroides. Here's an interesting presentation. Tuberculosis-like symptoms with abnormal imaging. So let's take a second to dissect this as the specifics were not delved into yet and we haven't covered tuberculosis. TB symptoms are often very generalized at first, ranging from cough and fever to weight loss. These are not that dissimilar from initial actinomyces infection as well. However, if you recall the main severe disease state, the abnormal imaging, whether it be an x-ray or an MRI, should give away that there is organ abnormalities of some sort. This presentation leads us to a possible nocardiosis abscess. When this bacterium disseminates to the brain, lungs, or other tissue, the abscess formation will show definitive abnormalities on radiologic imaging. These presentation tiers are hopefully stimulating some of the more creative ways to approach microbiology and infectious disease signs and symptoms. These are not testing your direct recall ability, which is why some of the answer choices and terminology may be new to you still. That's okay. Studies show that the ability to elaborate on previous knowledge helps to create mastery in a subject. For more recognition testing, try our in-course multiple choice questions. To test your recall memory, use the flashcard sets associated with this module. These two forms of retrieval, or testing effect, strengthen neural connections in the recently covered material.